in November. Your platform has called for various new programs, including Medicare for All, Housing as a Federal Right, a Federal Jobs Guarantee, Tuition-Free Public College, Canceling All Student Loan Debt. Um, according to nonpartisan and left-leaning studies friendly to your cause, including the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities or the Tax Policy Center, the overall price tag is more than $40 trillion in the next decade. You recently said in an interview that increasing taxes on the very wealthy plus an increased corporate tax rate would make $2 trillion over the next 10 years. So where is the other $38 trillion going to come from? Well, one of the things that we need to realize when we look at something like Medicare for All, Medicare for All would save the American people a very large amount of money. And what we see as well is that these systems are not just a pie in the sky. They are, many of them are accomplished by every modern civilized democracy in the Western world. The United, uh, the United Kingdom has a form of single-payer health care. Canada, France, Germany. What we need to realize is that these investments are better and they are good for our future. These are generational investments so that not just, they're not short-term band-aids, but they are really profound decisions about who we want to be as a nation and, as, and how we want to act as the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. Right, now I, I get that, but uh, you, the price tag for everything that you've laid out in your campaign is $40 trillion over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that Medicare for All uh, would cost more to some wealthier people uh, and to the government and to taxpayers while also reducing individual health care expenditures. But I'm talking about the overall package. You say it's not pie in the sky, but $40 trillion is quite a bit of money. Uh, and the, the taxes that you talked about raising to pay for this, to pay for your agenda, only count for two. And I, I, we're going by left-leaning uh, mm -hmm. analysts. Right. Well, when you look again at, again, how our health care works, currently we pay m much of these costs go into the private sector. So what we see is, for example, you know, a year ago I was working downtown in a restaurant. I, I went around and I asked how many of you folks have health insurance. Not a single person did because these, they were paying, they would have had to have paid $200 a month uh, for for a payment for insurance that, that had an $8,000 yeah. deductible. What these represent are lower costs overall for these programs. And additionally, what this is, is a broader agenda. We do know and we acknowledge that there are political realities. They don't always happen with just the wave of a wand, but we can work to make these things happen. And in fact, when, we, when you look at the economic activity that it spurs, for example, uh, if you look at my generation, millennials, mm -hmm. the amount of, of economic activity that we do not engage in, the fact that we delay purchasing homes, that we don't participate in the economy and purchasing cars, etc., as fully as possible, is a cost. It is a, a, an externality, if you will, of, of a unprecedented, unprecedented amounts so, of student loan debt. I'm assuming I'm not going to get an answer for the other $38 trillion. I'll have you back and, and maybe we can go over that, but I do want